Today, I'm excited to be going over with you guys my top 10 summer designer fragrances of 2021. Warm weather is fast approaching, if not already here for myself personally where I live and maybe for a lot of you guys as well. It's to the point now where my spring rotation isn't quite cutting it anymore because it's warming up so much. I'm starting to reach for stuff that is even fresher and even brighter. So I figured now would be the perfect time to go ahead and release this video to you. It's gonna be all designers in this one. And I don't know, in a week or two, I'll give you guys my top 10 summer niche fragrances for the year. And I'm excited about that list as well. So every year when it comes down to it, this list is composed of fragrances that a lot of times I do wear a lot in the summertime. So from uh, previous summers over the past years and also some newer scents that I've picked up that I'm excited to start wearing in the warm weather. We've got a nice mix and balance of both of those here. I always get super excited when making this video because summer is my favorite time of the year. I love the warm weather. And even though the fragrances may be a bit more boring compared to your winter rotation with the tobaccos and ouds and vanillas and that sort of thing, I don't know, there's something refreshing about a nice summer fragrance on a hot day. So I'm excited to get into this one. No honorable mentions or anything. We're just gonna jump straight into it. At number 10, we have Artisan Blue by John Barbados. Basil, bergamot, pine, and green notes are gonna be some of the main notes. Now, green notes, I kind of summarized there. Uh, I just kind of lumped up a bunch of the other green type of notes that are listed in here and also just by the overall smell. That's kind of what I get out of it. You get a nice herbal basil. You get the pine giving it a woodiness, kind of like a green woodiness, not like a, a cedar wood or anything like that. You get the bergamot and you just get overall a freshness. I find that there is something so satisfying about these fresher John Varvatos fragrances and I'm talking about stuff like blue and aqua and even the original and of course artisan pure. Now this one is taking place of artisan aqua for me and the reason why is because artisan aqua is unfortunately discontinued. You can't really find that one online anymore so I'm substituting blue in. I find that there's some similarities between the two. This one has some aromatic facets as well just like artisan aqua but there is still differentiations here, mainly being that this one overall, I think is a bit more fresh and herbal and it has a bit more of a bite to it. I've always liked Artisan Blue. I think it's a great, great scent. And also don't be confused or don't get the wrong idea. This is not a blue fragrance like a Sauvage or Dylan Blue, right? It's not Ambroxan heavy. And in fact, one thing that I've said before is I think a more fitting, appropriate name for this one would have been Artisan Green because I find overall it is very green. If they could have had a, you know, a green colored bottle and green uh, wrapping around it and called it green. I think that would have been, you know, a very nice move, but nonetheless, still a great scent. Coming in at number 10, Artisan Blue. It's affordable around, I think, $40 or so on discounters last time I checked. So it's one that you can pick up and wear pretty heavily. Moving on to number nine, we have one from Valentino. This one is Womo Aqua. Iris, tomato, and orange are gonna be some of the main notes. So if you're a fan or are familiar with the Valentino Womo line, you'll know that they are Iris fragrances. They are um, a bit more metrosexual, not quite as masculine as some others out there because they're utilizing that Iris. Kind of falls into a similar theme like Dior Ohm, Dior Ohm Intense, and so on. But within this line, we have Womo Aqua. This one adding an overall freshness to the original DNA, including notes like tomato, which gives it a bit of a different feel. It's like tomato leaf, so it doesn't smell like you know a salad or something like that. It's a more of a leafy tomato smell, just giving it a, a different feel. You almost get a little bit of a wateriness from this one. So even though it's called aqua, it's not like an aquatic, it's not sea salty or anything like that, but it does kind of have a watery, more so texture rather than smell. Really the easiest way to put this one is it's lighter and fresher than the original. This is good if you want something that's gonna still be a bit more classy for summertime. A lot of the fragrances out there for summer are gonna be more playful and more casual. This one on the other hand can be worn in a situation where you may wanna be a bit more dressed up and smell a little bit more well put together in one way or another. At number eight, we have Bottega Veneta Pour Homme Essence Aromatique. Now this one is an eau de cologne fragrance. This is the three ounce bottle size. Siberian pine, citruses, 
and cedar wood are going to be some of the main notes here in this one. So it really does take that original DNA, which I am a huge fan of, adds more citrus and just lightens it up and freshens it up. Smells fantastic. Now this is another one that is going to be a little bit more dressy as well. So kind of like the Valentino, this one's going to have less playful and more business type of smell is one way to look at it. Even though it does come across that way, it still does have a summery type of feel and, you know, a, a slight playful touch, even though it is primarily um, a bit more down to business and serious smelling, just by the way it's composed here, being a bit more of an aromatic and less super fun and bright. There is a hint of like a fun summery smell. Even though it's an eau de cologne, I still do get pretty good performance out of it. Six, seven hours, so longevity and relatively mild projection. In the warm weather, it does project more. Great fragrance here if you want something a bit different, something that's not quite as playful and fun for summertime. At number seven, we have Yves Saint Laurent Y. Oh, fresh. Lemon, ginger, and geranium are some of the main notes in this one. So I really, really like this flanker a lot. Maybe you were expecting to see Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau de Parfum in this video, and that for sure could be in here. So really, you could substitute Eau de Parfum in for this one if you prefer it or whatever the case may be. And I can tell you right now, I will be wearing Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau de Parfum in the summertime. However, there's something about the Eau Fresh version here that has very much a sparkling citrus pop. Like it, it's very bright and bubbly, you know, almost like a mixed drink. And that type of texture and smell when it's really hot outside is unbeatable. And a lot of it's coming from the way the ginger opens up mixing with the lemon and the other citrus and fresher notes. Some may say that the Eau de Parfum may be a bit too sweet for summertime, and I would definitely agree with that. You know, it can be pretty sweet. I still like to wear it and kind of push the boundaries a little bit in summertime with the Eau de Parfum. It does sweeten up a lot more in the heat, but I kind of like that. But for some people's personal taste, it may be a bit too much. And in that situation, you can go with the Eau Fraiche and get something that's much more toned back. Keep in mind a couple of things. One, this is an eau de toilette, whereas the Y eau de parfum is an eau de parfum. And so because of that, you're missing out on performance here. The eau de parfum is a very, very strong scent. This one, while it's not as strong as that, it still does pretty good, six, seven hours or so, but it's not really a beast mode scent like the EDP. But if you don't care about that, you just want something lighter and brighter and something with this mouth-watering, vibrant, sparkling nature about it, the Eau Fresh is the way to go. I really, really like this one for summertime. At number six, we have Higher Energy by Dior. Juniper berries, pineapple, and grapefruit are going to be some of the main notes. So I really, really like this because it's got all of that citrus and that freshness but it also has like a clean muskiness. So there's nothing about this one that smells dated or anything like that. It still has like a modern, clean, fresh man type of smell. Not really like a cologne type of smell, like an old cologne or even something like a fierce, you know, that generic type of smell, but just this clean freshness overall with that nice citrus up top. Another thing that I like about this one is that it's so, so versatile. You can of course wear it in summer, which is what I'm gonna be doing, but also within that, you have the uses within summer. So dressed up, dressed down, whatever it may be, this one will work good for anything. So you don't have to think too hard about this one. It's kind of one of those things where if you're in the mood for higher energy, you grab it and you spray it on. I also like the name because I think the name does represent the scent really well. It is one that's uplifting, you know, you spray this one on and you smell it, it just kind of gives you a, a nice boost, right? It really lifts you up and just gets you ready to go to conquer the day. I really like this one. It'll get you out there in the summertime and just make you have fun. Breaking into the top five, we have one from Bulgari. This one is Bulgari Man Extreme. Bergamot, cactus juice, grapefruit, and vetiver are going to be some of the main notes. So one of the things that will intrigue a lot of people is the cactus juice note in here. And while I don't know what cactus juice actually smells like, what I do know is that I get a lot of bergamot out of this one. I've talked about this before, but this has one of the better, higher quality succulent and brighter bergamot openings that I've smelled on the designer side of things. I mean, it's tart, it's sour, it is authentic. And I mean, you smell that, it is just so good. It like punches you in the face, it's so strong. 
you know, and it's kind of sweet as well. It's like a sweet, candied, strong bergamot note, and it is just killer. Smelling it right now, I mean, that is hard to beat. This is one that will have you hooked the first time you smell it like I did. There's a lot of great bergamot fragrances out there on the niche side, like Bergamot 22 and you know fragrances like that. But if you want something that's gonna be much more affordable and that will just conquer the summer day for you, Bulgari Man Extreme is a really nice choice. Again, it's affordable around, I think, $50 or so on discounters. It's got okay performance and it just has a great smell. On warm or really hot summer days, this one here is gonna be killer. At number four, we have a new release. So this is one that I am excited to wear this summer. I've been testing it here as it's been getting warmer, but still we're not fully in the summer yet. The weather's not quite there, but I know for sure I'm gonna love wearing this one when it's really hot and we're in the middle of June and July, you know, just in the peak of summer. This is one that I'm gonna be reaching for a lot. This one is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever. Grapefruit, violet leaf, and ozonic notes are some of the main notes in this one. So this is all about the grapefruit. Like I was just going on a second ago about the Bulgari, that one is bergamot done in an amazing way. One of the best ways, again, on the designer side that I've personally smelled. With this one, it's grapefruit done in one of the best ways that I've smelled on the designer side. And that's not something that I would say often. I'm not just gonna make that up just to hype something up. I mean, when I'm really blown away by something, I let you guys know. And if I'm not, then, you know, I'm not gonna make anything up. But that grapefruit is so vibrant and rindy and sour and tart, and it's just so realistic. I mean, you would not expect something with this level of quality and detail from a designer scent. Of course, right now it's not cheap because it's not at discounters yet. Uh, you can get it though in the United States, but it's going to be, you know, about $100 by the time it's all said and done, paying retail plus tax, shipping, that sort of thing. But once it does hit discounters and you can get it for mid range designer price, this is going to be one of the best pickups, I think, for the price that you can get in the summertime. The ozonic notes are in here, giving it just a, a light, airy, wispy smell. Uh, you get the violet leaf, and that gives off a watery feel. You'll notice that there are no aquatic notes, which is you know different from the original light blue and just the rest of the line, but the watery feel that you do get from this one is coming from the violet leaf. Great, great fragrance here. Really good performance on my skin, and another one that is just stunning and smells so good and so addicting in the heat. I can't wait to continue testing this one and really start wearing it once we get into summer. At number three and number two and number one, we have fragrances that are gonna be a bit more typical. And what I mean by that is, you've heard of these, of course, just like probably the rest in this video, but these are kind of my summer must-haves. These are ones that are just hard for me to let go of in the summertime. And every time we get just a little taste of warm weather, you know, kind of starts off uh, warming up a little bit, getting into the 50s, 60s in spring, and maybe we get a day or two where it's 75 or even almost 80. It's like, oh yeah, the first fragrances I think of are usually gonna be any of these three. You know, there's something about these. A lot of it is me making memories with them, having fun times with them, and just the smell that I really like. So I'm gonna run through these. We're still going in order, but to be honest, one, two, and three can be jumbled around any which way because I love them all. Bulgari Aqua Atlantique. Sea notes, ambroxan, and watery notes, along with grapefruit, bergamot, I believe as well, are some of the other notes in here, or maybe it is just bergamot. I honestly can't remember. You would think I would know this because if, you've, if you know my channel, you'll know my thoughts on Atlantique. But what I do know is still, this is one of my favorites. I mean, immediately when I smell this, it just takes me back to summertime, to having fun, to making so many great memories. It's kind of sweet from just the amount of ambroxan that's in here, but you still do get a saltiness. You still do get a watery, aquatic freshness. This stuff just smells so, so good when it's hot outside. One of the other reasons why I like this one so much is that it just has nuclear performance. I mean, 10, 11, 12 plus hours longevity and very strong projection. One of the strongest summer fragrances I own. It's crazy and it's also $40, $50 making this one a steal. At number two, we have Aqua de Jo Profondo. So the reason why I like this one so much, I think, is because, you know, at this point I've smelled so many aquatics. At one point, aquatics were all I cared about. Now I'm more into stuff with depth, richness, that sort of thing. But, you know, I've smelled so many aquatics that at this point, it takes an aquatic with a bit more of an artistic 
uh, different type of composition to get me to really like it. And that's Profondo for me. I know not everyone's a fan of Profondo. Um, you know, a lot of people still like Profumo better and I love Profumo. It is still one of my top favorites. However, this doesn't smell like any other aquatic on the market. And for me, someone who has smelled so many and kind of starts to get bored of that genre, that's a good thing. And that's what kind of relit my spark with this type of fragrance. You know, it's different. You get the mineral notes so much in here and it just smells so photorealistic. And this is why I say it's important for you guys out there to make sure you give things a chance, try them a couple times. Because when I first got this in, I wasn't really necessarily blown away. I was just kind of indifferent at first. But over time, as I have worn it and I've kind of gathered my thoughts on it after having plenty of time to test it, it has just become one of my favorites. And in summertime, this one is bright and sparkling and fresh and an amazing compliment getter and a good performer. It's hard for me to beat. And last up, at number one, we have Dior Homme Cologne. So this is another one that is very nostalgic for me. And for whatever reason, it just kind of takes me back to my childhood in terms of the smell. Just kind of one of those things, which is why it's a favorite for me. Obviously, I wasn't wearing this when I was a child. I wasn't into fragrance at all. But there's, it just kind of triggers, I guess, that, that memory side of my brain to where it reminds me of sitting, you know, outside in the summertime. You know, you'll hear this one get described as uh, smelling like a ice cold pitcher of lemonade. And I'm sure you've never heard that before. Never in your life have you heard that. So I always kind of cringe when I say it. But people who maybe haven't heard that, there you go. And that is, to be fair, a really good way to describe this one. And I always kind of like to add in, you know, it's like a, a sweet pitcher of lemonade because there's almost like a sugary sweet facet about this one. Even though it is still very fresh and very citrusy and musky, there's a bit of a sweet touch. I don't know, there's something about this one that smells so fantastic. It makes me happy. It uplifts me every time I smell this one. And ultimately, when it is the hottest of hot, like the hottest of days in the summertime, uh, this is what I reach for because there's so little to it in terms of the note breakdown and, and just what it's composed of that not a whole lot breaks down and gets too sweet or gets too heavy in the summertime. You know, it can be 90 degrees and super humid. And if I wear this one, uh, it's still going to stay fresh and kind of keep me cooled and refreshed. So yeah, this is my number one Dior Homme Cologne. It's kind of another one of those summer staples for me and for the foreseeable future, this is always gonna be in my summer rotation. So that's gonna do it for me, guys. That was my top 10 summer designer fragrances of 2021. Excited to get this list out and share it with you guys, but I wanna hear from you. What are some of your top 10 summer designer fragrances or niche fragrances or a mixture of both that you're excited to wear and are going to be wearing this summer? Let me know down below in the comments. And remember, if you have any sort of interest in any of the fragrances that I brought to you guys today, I will link them all down below to discounters. Uh, most of these I picked up myself from places like Fragrance Net and Fragrance X. So those links will be down below. It's a great way to save money off of retail. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.